With it now being late into the night, all the groups had finally returned to the house. So, Kyoku, Ken, would you mind explaining these? Izuka cornered the two children, holding up the water pistol and machete respectively. You brought a real machete? Ken asked, looking at Kyoku with a shocked expression. I didn't hurt anyone with it. Kyoku pouted. No, but you did mug people out of their candy. Izuka gave her a stern look. How did you think that was possibly an okay thing to do? Kyoku didn't answer, only looking away guiltily. Izuka sighed. How did you even get this? I found it. Kyoku obviously lied. You found it, Izuka repeated skeptically. Where exactly did you find it? Around. Kyoku replied. Kyoku, whose memories did you mess with to get this? Izuku asked, having figured her out by now. Momos, Kyoku muttered, slumping over sadly at having been found out. When did she, actually I suppose given her quirk me not remember it makes sense, Momo said. Kyoku what have I told you about using your quirk on people without their permission? Izuku asked her with an upset expression. Not to. Kyoku answered despondently. And so why did you do it anyway? Izuku asked her. Because I wanted to scare people. Kyoku moped. I thought it would be fun. Izuku sighed. And there are ways to do that, without carrying around an actual weapon. You could have asked me if you wanted to give people a Halloween scare. Sorry, daddy. Kyoku apologized, lowering her head in shame. Izuka sighed, look, for now, we'll be taking half the candy you got, which is more than fair considering you stole a lot of it. We'll discuss further punishments tomorrow, for now, I want you to enjoy the party, understood? Yes, daddy. Kyoku sighed. Izuka then turned to Ken. Honestly, not the worst thing you could have done. Still shouldn't have done it, and you know that, but not too terrible. So, punishment free? Ken asked hopefully. Not quite. You're losing a quarter of your candy. Izuka told him. Ah, man. Ken groaned. Be grateful that's all the punishment he's giving you doofus. Nara scowled at him. Anyone else would have done something much worse. Ken pouted. He knew that was true, which is why he wasn't making such a stink over it, but it still sucked. Although to be fair, he was still getting a lot of candy. All the kids had pulled in an obscene amount of candy, each one of them filling more than a single bucket. Kyoku had gathered the most, because she stole it. Yami also got quite a bit more than the others, most likely because out of fear. Fuku and Shiroku would likely be tied for third in candy gathering, with both of them likely getting more candy because of the quality of their costumes, as well as Fuku getting some pity candy. Wait a minute, Sansan, Fu, and Netsu don't eat candy. Achiko pointed out. What are they gonna do with their candy? Well, I'm going to give Fu's to Mu, since he didn't get any, Izuku explained. And the rest will be given out as a prize to the winner of the costume contest and jack-o'-lantern making contest. What? Ken shouted in shock. There was a prize for that. You never said anything about that. I mean it's pretty self-explanatory, you win a contest, you get a prize, Nara said smugly. And it wouldn't have made a difference anyway, no one's beating Shiruku at the costume contest. Shiruku smirked, feeling confident in her chances. Well we'll see, Izuka said. Now let's go outside. Class 1A, as well as a few workers, have been setting up the party for us, and I think you'll like what they've done. XXXXXXXXX. Izuka was right, the children were in fact, very pleased. Class 1A had done a good job, putting up holiday decorations all over the place, as well as setting up tables, and whatever else would be needed for a party. Including setting up tables filled with various snack foods, all themed after Halloween. However, the most impressive work was done by the people who Azuka specifically hired to help change the place up. Firstly, the gardens, which had been mostly empty up until now, was now changed into a full-on pumpkin patch, with full-grown pumpkins included. And second was the pool which had been filled with dry ice, making it give off a spooky mist. It really was astounding how much could get done, in so little time, thanks to quirks. Man you really spooked this place up. Ken praised. We tried out best. Kaminari said. All of class 1A joined in the fantasy theme, with costumes ranging from witches to knights, to adventures, heck Kirishima had a dragon-themed costume. Cool. Sansan bounced around happily. And that's not all, Izuka told them. I also invited some extra guests. Then, they heard more people enter the backyard. That must be them now, Izuka said. Everyone looked towards the door, at the six guests that came along. 
In front of them was Amai, dressed up as Samus in her armor, excluding her helmet which she was holding. Behind her was Koda and the wild wild pussy cats, all of whom were in their hero costumes, and Koda was, wearing ketters over his hat, and looked about as happy about that as you'd expect. Yami, Amai ran over to the cloaked boy, greeting him cheerfully. You look absolutely terrifying. Yup. Yami nodded. Knowing there was no actual fear or malice behind her statement, only an objective fact. Amai quickly spotted Fuku and gasped. Link. She went over to Fuku, who gasped, and froze up. That's such a great costume. Amai praised as she looked over the whole outfit. So accurate too. You must have worked really hard on it. Why yeah. Fuku stuttered. Why yours is really good too. I l like your arm cannon. Thank you. Amai said holding up the fake weapon with a smile. Meanwhile, Kyoka walked up to Koda and giggled. Nice ears. Koda's eye twitched. Hey, I watched the Friday the 13th movies too, what was Jason killed by again, oh right. Water. Kyoka's eyes widened, as she quickly realized where this was going. Ah. Kyoka screamed as she ran away from Koda, who started shooting water blasts at her while chasing her. Koda. Mandalay called out to him, about him to chase after him to try and stop the child, but Izuku held out his hand to stop her. She needs to learn to stop antagonizing people, Izuku explained. And getting a little wet isn't a bad way to learn. He's got a point. Pixie Bob agreed. I suppose so. Mandalay sighed. Thank you for inviting us over by the way. Koda was very happy to get the invitation. Although he was less happy about having to dress up for the occasion, Tiger added. I can see that, Izuka noted. Well, hopefully, he'll forget about it as the party goes on. At least he didn't get it as bad as Fu. Yeah, looks like little Kiba pulled him into something. Ragdoll giggled. Wait where is Fu? Mandalay asked, not seeing the boy around. Standing next to Kiba, Izuka said, pointing over to Kiba and Fu, who were talking to Amai. Wait that blonde girl is Fu. Pixie Bob shouted in shock. Damn he looks good in a skirt. Never would have figured him for trap material. Please don't refer to any of my kids as trap material. Izuka deadpanned. Please don't refer to anyone as trap material. Mandalay deadpanned. Meanwhile, Fu heard all of this, as he blushed with embarrassment even more. Well, looks like almost everyone is here, Izuka said. Except for Dash. Thump. 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 Kai walked in, eagerly joining his other siblings in the festivities. Hey everyone! You're back! The giant boy came in with devil horns on all of his heads, which were a bit small for him, however, they were still huge. I'm here for the party. I've been waiting for this all day, Kai said eagerly. Well alright then, the only person we're missing is Mu, Izuka said, before feeling a tug on his pants. He looked down and saw Mu, dressed as a shy guy from Mario. Oh never mind, Izuka said. Let the party begin. Heck yeah. Mina cheered. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Mu quietly took a small pumpkin and went to his table. Likewise, Eri, Yanda, and Kyoku took smaller pumpkins, not really wanting to carry any of the bigger ones. Kei took on of the medium-sized pumpkin, struggling a bit to take it away, but happily doing so. Shiroku, despite having the strength to take a larger pumpkin, took one of the smaller, medium-sized ones, while Fuku struggled to bring one of the larger medium-sized, over to her table. Netsa had on gloves, so he was able to carry over a medium-sized pumpkin to his table. Nara and Otoko picked smaller pumpkins, along with Koda and Amai. And with everyone's pumpkins gathered, now it was time to start carving. Fuku shyly approached Sato, who smiled as he saw her get closer. Uh, um, see can you? Fuku tried her best to ask for his assistance, while Sato waited patiently. Can you help me with my jack-o'-lantern? Of course. Sato gave her a light pat on the head. Let's get started. See can I join? Mu said, speaking so quietly that they almost didn't hear him. Amai went over to Yami. Wanna work together? HM. Yami nodded, and the two got to work. Lady Kiba do mind if your loyal servants step in and offer you some assistance? Mina asked, with Toru right behind her. Of course, Kiba responded happily. But just so you know, I won't tolerate any slacking. Of course Lady K, Toru said. Some of the other kids went to ask for help, while others worked on their pumpkins by themselves, with careful supervision, to make sure they didn't hurt themselves or do something wrong. After everyone had finished up their jack-o'-lanterns. Alright, then, since Kai couldn't participate, he'll be judging the jack-o'-lanterns, Izuku explained. I'll do my best dad, Kai said excitedly, as he eagerly approached. Everyone, I'm gonna rate your pumpkins. Starting with Ken, Kai leaned down all three of his heads towards Ken's creation. The jack-o'-lantern had the symbol of the Omnitrix carved into it, and the fire lighting it was green. Izuku had given them some materials which would allow them to change the color of the fire. Oh, like your watch. It's really cool. Kai praised. And it's green. I love green. A plus. HM. Ken puffed his chest out, looking extremely smug. Kai moved his heads to look at Nara's next. Nara's pumpkin had a cat face carved into it, with a pink flame illuminating it. It's a cute kitty. Kai noted excitedly. It's cute. A plus. Nara smiled at him and gave Kai a head pat. Thanks, Kai. Kai giggled, enjoying the head pat for a second, before moving on to the next kid, Sanson. Sanson had carved Ramura Tempest himself into the jack-o'-lantern, lit by a blue flame. It matches your costume. A plus. Kai grated. Is he just going to give everyone a plus s? Kaminari asked. Kai moved on to Yami, whose pumpkin had a strange emblem on it, with some sort of eyeball in the center, surrounded by lines in a circle, Salem's emblem, lit by a bright red flame. Spooky! Kai praised. How did you come up with it? Yami shrugged. Saw it in my dreams. Cool. A plus. Kai grated. Yeah, he is, Izuku answered. This pattern did indeed continue, as Kai moved on to all the other kids' jack-o'-lanterns. Airy Red Flamed Apple Lantern, Kei's Green Flamed Snake Lantern, Kyoku's Scared Faced Black Flamed Jack-o'-lantern, Otoko's White Flamed Ghost Jack-o'-lantern, Yanda's Golden Flamed Crown Lantern, Shiroka's Black Flamed Spider Lantern, Mu's Red Flamed Shikai Lantern, Fukunoko's Blue Flamed Hillian Shield Lantern, Amai's Red Flamed Mario Mushroom Lantern, Kiba's Red Flamed Bat Lantern, and even Netsu's idea to stick the lantern on his head. Heck, even Fu's and Koda's generic lanterns got a plus S. And so now that literally, everyone got the same grade, it seemingly left them at an impasse. Well, Kai, it looks like you gave everyone the same grade. Izuka stepped in, not surprised by this at all. Sorry, they're all just so good. Kai apologized. Don't worry about it son, Izuka said, patting Kai's leg. Do you happen to have a favorite? Hmm. Kai took a minute to think, looking over all the pumpkins once again. So hard, I like, Fuku's. Ha, huh. Fuku gasped, as froze up in shock. Congratulations Fuku. Kei ran over and congratulated Fuku, along with Eri. Hmm. I'm not happy about my loss, but at the very least, I lost to a worthy opponent. Kiba said, taking this surprisingly well. Amai was slightly upset about losing, but she also did really like Fuku's lantern, so that softened the blow. Ken was the most upset about losing and was actually about to say something when his sister grabbed onto his shoulder and whispered into his ear. Let her have this, or so help me, me and Kiba will make sure you don't see the light of day. Now Ken was pretty confident in his strength. 
But he was not confident enough to try and fight both his sister and Kiba at the same time, so he wisely shut his mouth. Now everyone, it's time for the costume contest, Izuku announced. That also means, I'll finally be announcing the judges. Suddenly, they heard the back door open again. And here they are now, Izuku said. Into the backyard, came three pro heroes. Nizu, dressed in his usual suit, but with devil horns on his head. Which was very appropriate, if a bit lazy. Midnight, who was dressed as a, ghost, or rather, it was a quickly made ghost costume to cover up her actual costume, which was not appropriate for this event, to say the least. And lastly was the symbol of peace, All Might himself wearing a Frankenstein's monster costume. Greetings children, I am here, All Might announced. All Might, shouted many of the children in shock. Ahaha, ha. All Might laughed, as many of the children flocked to him. No way, the number one hero. Ken looked up at All Might with stars in his eyes. He's even bigger in person than he is on TV. Netsu said with equal amazement. Izuka went over to Nizu and Midnight, while the children were distracted by All Might. Thank you all for coming. And thank you especially Midnight for not, you know. Well, I couldn't refuse a chance to amaze some cute little kitties. Midnight giggled. To tell you the truth I didn't have many plans for tonight. For whatever reason, I don't get invited to many Halloween parties. Nizu explained. I think they just don't want to tempt fate. Izuka thought. Well, I think we should get on to the contest then, don't want to make All Might stay in that form any longer than needed. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
Well um, it's a very, very nice costume, that you, uh, pull off very well? Foo sighed. Thank you. Well, I give it a 9 out of 10. Would have been a 10, but no breast. Midnight teased. An 8 out of 10 for me, Nisa said. 10 out of 10. All Might judged. Have to give credit to the plus ultra makeup. Kiba smiled from the side, taking a bit of pride in this. After all, it was her idea, and she had done all of the makeup and wig work. She had tried to get him to attach fake breasts, but Fu refused, even when she offered to pay more. That gives you the same score as your sister. 27 Midnight said. Makes sense, because you're just as cute. Fu grit his teeth, as he could hear Ken and Kyoka giggling in the audience, as he exited the stage. Alright, next is Yami, dressed as the Grim Reaper, Nisa called. With that, Yami walked on stage, his red eyes staring into the souls of the judges. It is quite a chilling design, Nizu admitted. Even though it's a child, his appearance would make even a pro hero skin crawl. It's like his eyes are drilling into me. Midnight shivered. Very impressive. I think there are many villains who'd sell their soul to look half as terrifying as you young Yami. All Might laughed. Very good. Captures the Halloween spirit just right. Although honestly, I think the fake side brings it down a bit. Midnight said. It just reminds me that it is in fact a costume. Ah, I see what you're talking about. Nisa nodded. If it was just the robe, your naturally terrifying self, then I could believe that you were some actual incarnation of the Grim Reaper. I can, kind of see that. All Might said, taking a closer look at the side. In that case, I would give it about an 8. Midnight said. I personally would score it a 9, Nizo added. Ah, uh, 9, All Might would have given it a 10, but he had a feeling that given all the splendid costumes tonight, he would have to heighten his standards, otherwise everyone would get 10s. So that puts you at 26. Slightly lower than the other two, but still a very good score. Nizo told him. Yami shrugged. He only really participated because Amai suggested it. He wasn't too invested in how he did in the contest. And so he unceremoniously exited, making way for the next person. Alright, next we have Amai, as Samus Aran. All Might announced. Amai eagerly ran onto the stage, this time she had her helmet on, and aimed her arm cannon around at invisible targets, to better show off her costume. Very nice. Chibi little Samus. Midnight cooed. Every detail is accounted for, a very convincing costume overall. However, it does have that plastic shine that makes it seem a bit fake. Yes, that is indeed a problem. Nizu agreed. It's a small detail, but it goes a long way in making it feel real. With that said, everything else is so great, that I think I'll only deduct one point. 9 out of 10. Midnight said. I agree. 9 out of 10. Nisa said. Um, yes. 9 out of 10, all might agree. And that brings your score up to a 27. Tied for first place so far, Midnight told her. Amai felt a twinge of disappointment, but quickly shook it off, and bowed. Thank you all for your time. And with that, she exited the stage. On to our next contestant, Fukunoko, as Link. Midnight called. And with that, they all waited, as Fuku slowly walked on stage, trembling slightly with fear and anxiety. You am H hi, Fuku said, trying her best not to give in to her fears and collapse on stage. Hello dear. Midnight said with a sweet costume. Won't you show off your costume for us? I am. Um. Fuku was struggling to remember what to do when out of the corner of her eye she saw Shiruku gesturing for her to use her bow. Oh oh. Yes. Fuku took her bow, as well as an arrow from her quiver, then took aim at a nearby branch, striking a dynamic pose in the process. Okay, Fuku, focus. Breath. Fuku took a deep breath and focused all her attention on her target. She felt the world around her fade away, until all there was the branch. Twip. Thunk. Fuku let loose her arrow, and it flew into the branch, lodging the arrow into the wood. Oh my. Showing off a talent as well as her costume. Very nice. Midnight praised. And it's a character accurate skill, I'm gonna have to bump it up a point for that. Very impressive display. About a tricky thing to use, so to show such skill with it at such a young age, is very admirable. All Might praised giving her applause. I agree wholeheartedly. Nisa nodded. I think you have a future in Kiddo. Why you think so? Fuku stuttered, blushing intensely at all the praise. We know so dear. Midnight said, giving her a reassuring smile. Now as for your ranking. To put it simply your costume is utterly perfect. I can't find a single fault in it. 
easily a 10 out 10. 9. Niso added. The hair is a tad bit too long. I'll have to give it a 10. All Might said. I think the issue with the hair is so minor, in comparison to the character accurate skill she just displayed. That brings you up to a 29. The highest score so far. You should be proud. Nisa told her. W what? Fuku was shocked by how well she was doing tonight. First, she won the jack-o'-lantern contest, and now she was getting at least second place here. Was she actually, talented? Fuku's mind was blown, and she walked off stage while completely out of it. Alright, for our last contestant we have Shiruku, in an original costume. Midnight said. Shiruku scuttled on stage, spreading her arms and waving around her staff, and showing off her costume. Oh my, what a beautiful costume. Midnight praised. Such wonderful color work, and design, and it fits your unique body so well. I can feel all the thought and hard work put into putting this together. Indeed. When it comes to hero costumes, it's quite easy to tell how much thought and heart was put into each one of them. Nisa said. And while this isn't a hero costume, the same applies here. Not to mention, the originality. Coming up with something truly original is difficult in this day and age, but you pulled it off beautifully. And one advantage of coming up with something original is that you have full control over what the costume looks like. All Might added. Meaning we can't take away any points for character inaccuracy. Overall a truly splendid costume. 10 out 10. Midnight judged. Agreed. 10 out of 10. Nisa said. No complaints here. 10. All Might judged. And with that, you received a perfect 30, making you the winner of the competition. Midnight applauded her, along with Nizu and All Might. Everyone else applauded her as well, including the other contestants. Alright, everyone. The party will continue for another hour, before coming to a close. Izuku announced. Enjoy. And as such, the children, 1A, and the teachers enjoyed the party, eating and talking away, into the night.